we learned that the soul has three levels to it. The highest level of the soul, its absolute root, is called Ayin, the divine nothingness. Ayin Mazal Yisrael. So teaches us the Baal Shem Tov, that the divine nothingness is the Mazal. The Mazal is the Shoresh, the root of the soul. Then a person, is, when he's born, is given a name. And the, the name is given to him by his parents who have Ruach HaKodesh. It's a divinely inspired name. And that name has in it the shlichut, the special shlichut and service of that soul in this, in this world, in this lifetime. But in between the ayin and the name is light. Or simple light. The light, when it goes through a prism, it, uh, a whole spectrum, a whole rainbow of colors emerges, and every name has its particular spectral lines to it, which define its nature and its purpose, its function in the, in the world. What other things in Kabbalah correspond to these three uh, levels of ayin and or and name? One simple correspondence is the first three supernal spherot, which are Keter and Chochmah and Bina. Keter is above mind, it's super rational, it's unconscious. The unconscious, the ultimate unconscious level of the soul is the ayin, the nothingness. The revelation of light, it's called Reshit HaGidui, the first initial re revelation of light is wisdom. It's a flash, a lightning flash of wisdom. That's light, that's pure light. But form, to assume a certain form, which is like to assume a, a, even a body with a purpose, a well-defined, understandable purpose in life, that's bina, that's understanding. So the simplest way to understand these three levels that we are, are discussing that pertain to this week's parasha is that they correspond to the first three spherot, which are, once more, Keter is the crown, is the absolute nothingness of the soul. And then comes wisdom, which is also the relative nothingness, relative to Bina, to understanding. That's the light, the flesh. And then comes understanding, which in our context is understanding who I am. In Kabbalah, every one of these Sirot has a question and answer to it. The question and answer of Bina, of Ima, Bina is the, called the mother figure, is me, who, who am I? And that who am I is my purpose in, in life. And that's Bina and that's form. Bina gives form just like a mother gives form to the embryo, to the simple seed of the father. That's exactly what happens in the, in the womb of understanding who am I and what is my purpose in life. So once more, these three levels in general are the first three spherot of Keter, Chochmah, and Bina. Another very important uh, triplet of, of concepts in Kabbalah and Hasidut, which correlates to these uh, three levels, is Nekuda Kav Shetach, which means point, line, and area. When something develops, it develops from a point. First, it's a point which is, has no dimensions. It's a zero dimension. Zero dimension obviously alludes to iron. If something is nothing, so it has no dimensions to it. It has no expansion to it whatsoever. It's just a simple abstract point. The flash, the first flash, like a lightning flash, is the flash of, of, of Chokmah, the line. It's relative to the point. It's like a line, a ray. Light is a ray, just like it says that after Hashem contracted his infinite, the infinite light, which was, which is for us totally concealed, then a ray of light permeated the vacuum that was created by the tzimtzum, by the initial contraction. That's wisdom relative to the nothingness of the unconscious that precedes that. 
to the, which is simply a point, one, one dimensionless point. But then comes an area, an area, as if we said that the line is like the ray of line that permeates the vacuum, the area is the first figure that forms around that ray of light, which is called primordial man in Kabbalah. And that's already a well-defined figure with a purpose, with, with limbs, with everything ready to, to assume and perform his function in life. So that, uh, once more, we have another very important triplet of concepts that to, to contemplate, to meditate upon in, in correspondence to our nothingness and light and name. One final meditation is that in the body itself, this each one of us can, can meditate upon this, the ayin is reflected or shines in the forehead, which is above the differentiation of the face, of the eyes, the ears, the nose. It's just a pure, simple, unconscious experience, as it were. This is a symbol that is symbolized in Kabbalah by the, the forehead. Sometimes people speak of a middle eye in the middle of the forehead. In Hebrew, ayin, ayin yud nun, means I, but the inner essence of I, of Ayin, is Ayin with an Aleph, which means nothingness. So actually there is no I in the middle of the forehead, but there is nothing. Nothingness, the Ayin, it's as though you have one Ayin with an Aleph in the middle of the forehead, and then another Ayin and Ayin here, the two eyes, which are each Ayin with an Ayin. But the middle, the forehead, is the is the nothingness. Then the light is revealed in the eyes, in the ayin, in the ayin with, with the letter ayin, spelled with an ayin. That's where the light is revealed. Where does the name come from? The name is expressed, the expression of the mouth. The name is given with the mouth. When a person is called by name, it's through the mouth. If it's letters, it's letters, it's, it's a combination, a permutation of letters to form a word. And the expression of the word is in the mouth. So the full form of one's purpose is given to him, as it were, by the mouth of Hashem. His light is a radiation from eyes. But the origin of the soul is in the middle of the forehead, as it were. Well, so this is a very deep meditation that a person can meditate himself. It says that in union, to reach the ultimate level of union of souls, like in marriage, one should contemplate and, and meditate upon the common source of the two souls in Ayin, in a common forehead, Metzach. Well, this is an idiom, a, a very deep symbol in, the, in Kabbalah that the ultimate union of souls is only in the forehead. Because that's the I and that's the nothingness. And nothingness, the two souls unite and are one, absolutely one, in that abstract point of nothingness. So once more we have now another very, very deep meditation, just in the face itself, that you have the forehead and the eye and the mouth, that those three words are combined again, mouth yet, it equals simcha, joy. We're now in the month, the beginning of the month of Adar, Mishin Nichnas Adar Mabim Besimcha. So this meditation itself is a very beautiful meditation of, of joy. And the word joy, simcha, also equals sod Hashem li re'av. The mystery of Hashem is to those that fear Him. So may HaKadosh Baruch Hu help us to, to contemplate these uh, deep secrets of the Torah and to, uh, and to realize that they, it should give us the joy of serving HaKadosh Baruch Hu and with our joy in serving Hashem Valeti on Goel, Mashiach will come and redeem us in the whole world.